I love sound. I've always been fascinated by it. By simply vibrating the air around you, I can give you information, make you feel something. Wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? Drive you crazy. I can even hurt you. Good news, we have a sponsor this time. Oh, finally! <laughs> Gil's moving up to the big leagues, boy. Ah! Which means I'm super excited about a mobile game. This is Small Town Murders from the makers of Angry Birds. It's got over 2 million players already. It's one of the fastest growing mobile games out there on the market. And it's from the makers of Angry Birds, which is kind of cool. Those of you who click on the link in the description right now get five free booster packs to get you started and get you rolling. Although I gotta say, as I've been playing, I haven't needed to use a single booster pack. You get to solve murders, get to solve crimes, get to meet the townsfolk. You got Nora Mystery, you got Deputy Shanahan. You know, it's really crazy that she's an author, I guess, and she does true crime novels. And because she's so famous, all the cops let her into all of the crime scenes, which is very real. You can do your part and fight crime by doing, by, by swiping. Okay, so I swipe. That, I do, okay, I do that. Okay, okay. All right, we're getting somewhere. We're doing it, all right, okay. Awesome, awesome, freaking awesome. Dopamine! Go away, Muda, I'm playing my game. You're supposed to be dead. I just got $50 for ringing that doorbell. Be sure to click the link in the description and get five free booster packs when you use my link. Woo! All right, let's get back at it. August 27th, 1883. Alice Springs, Australia. Ranchers at a sheep camp are going about their day when their peaceful afternoon is interrupted by the sound of gunfire in the distance. On guard, ready for trouble, the ranchers scanned the horizon, waiting. But nothing came. What they didn't realize was that what they thought was gunfire was actually the distant sound of a volcano erupting. But a volcano hasn't erupted in Australia for over 7,000 years. How? The volcano they heard that day was over 2,300 miles away. The island of Krakatoa near Indonesia. Throughout your life, you may have heard some pretty loud sounds, but the ones we're going to talk about today for the most part are not the ones that you can typically walk away from. But before we get to the good stuff, let's briefly cover how sound is measured so that we have a frame of reference. We measure sound level in decibels. Let's say you're in a quiet library and someone whispers something right next to you. A human whisper is about 15 to 30 decibels, not very loud. The last time you went to a rock concert, depending on where you were standing, you were exposed on average to about 120 decibels. But is 120 decibels only four times louder than a human whisper? No. One thing that we need to know about sound measured in decibels is that it's a logarithmic measurement. It's measured in power-based exponential levels, meaning that 100 decibels is not 10 times louder than 10 decibels. No, 100 decibels is actually 10 billion times louder. So does sound have a limit to how loud something can be? Well, it turns out that at about sea level, sound indeed has an upper limit of about 194 decibels. As sound is carried away through the air, it vibrates the air molecules around it, carrying those waves forward. But after 194 decibels, 
air at sea level is unable to accommodate stronger waves than that. 194 decibels is insanely loud. If you ever had the opportunity to see a Saturn V rocket launch during the Apollo program, you witnessed an object producing about 140 decibels, which is six decibels louder than the human threshold of pain at 134. This is an LRAD, one of the least powerful and most portable versions of it in fact, touted as a non-lethal deterrent and seen simply as a device that disperses crowds and only causes discomfort. It produces a focused beam of sound that can be directed and heard clearly as far as a few miles away with volumes as high as 162 decibels. Safety dictates that it should never be used at distances of less than 200 feet with strong guidance that it should be used at even further distances. The dark side of the use of LRAD systems is that because it is touted as a non-lethal deterrent, there is sometimes a cavalier approach in their use, sometimes using more strength and at closer range than safety would permit. The manufacturers of these devices strongly advise robust and continuous training for any law enforcement officer using them. The decibel level of speech presented through LRADs is unsafe. It is capable of causing temporary and permanent hearing loss for those in front of, behind, or on the periphery of the device. There is no question that those devices are capable of causing permanent hearing damage and or tinnitus or hyperacuses with a single exposure. These devices are incredibly dangerous and are known to cause profound and permanent effects, the least of which being hearing loss after only a single exposure. The footage of New York show NYPD officers using these devices at extremely close ranges. This resulted in long-lasting injuries to civilians. Listen to the accounts of some who were present for this particular incident. It feels like your eardrums are beating out of your head. It makes the side of your body that you've been hit on feel numb and that your sinuses are inflamed. I felt like I had blood coming out of my orifices. I heard the ringing for about a week. For the first week, I had a migraine and just a lot of facial pressure. Since the LRAD incident, I've been pretty freaked out about going back. I'm worried about what damage it caused and it could cause if I went out there again. Now, I just mentioned that there's a limit to how sound can theoretically be. But what if I told you there was a way to cheat physics itself and go even higher? To break the limits of how loud a sound can be, we need a different medium in which it can travel. Sound has different properties in different mediums. If we left the safety of land and venture into the Earth's oceans, we find a dazzling alien world unlike anything we are accustomed to. Light, touch, sound, all of these senses that we experience above the waves behave a little differently down here. The loudest animal on Earth is thought to be a sperm whale. Sperm whale can click at about 236 decibels. It's the loudest animal on the planet. Sperm whales can hear each other in the ocean from hundreds, even thousands of miles away. Some researchers believe that they're able to keep in contact with one another through these clicks on other sides of the planet. Uh, these clicks are so powerful in the water that they can blow out your eardrums easily and they could actually vibrate a human body to death. Swimming next to a sperm whale, as it produces these sounds at the lower range of 188 decibels, is louder than the equivalent of standing next to a rocket launch without ear protection. 
These are the whales clicking these guys literally from the inside out to see what they're all about. The clicks were so powerful that one of these guys put out his hand to stop a whale from running into him and his hand uh, actually was paralyzed for about four hours afterwards. Once you're hanging out with the whales for a long time, this didn't happen to me, but it happened to these guys, their bodies started heating up from being pelleted with all of that energy after a while. In 2019, scientists at Stanford's SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory, run by the U.S. Department of Energy, achieved what was previously thought unthinkable. They created a sound underwater that topped off at an astounding 270 decibels. They achieved this by using a device called a LINAC coherent light source. As we know, the visible spectrum that you and I see is a very narrow sliver of the spectrum of what we consider light. The lowest frequencies that you and I can see is the color red, while the highest is violet. Beyond that, we need special tools to even see what lies beyond that spectrum. And far, far, far beyond the color violet, we find x-rays. And that is the type of light that is produced by the LINAC coherent light source. This device produced a series of focused x-rays onto a single point which created sound waves so intense that it created molecular-sized black holes and boiled the water around it, reaching temperatures in excess of 180,000 degrees Fahrenheit within a millionth of a millionth of a second or about the time it takes the average YouTube user to click skip ad. As devastatingly loud as this is, it pales in comparison to the power of nature itself. We all know that sound cannot travel through space, since there is no medium in the vacuum to carry it. But have you ever spent some time outside looking up at the sun and wondered, what if we could hear it? Does the sun actually produce sound? Well, as you're about to find out, it's a good thing that sound does not travel through space, because the answer is most definitely yes. The sun is a powerhouse of activity, using hydrogen into helium, a constant raging inferno, producing more energy in a second than we have in the entirety of human existence. My name is Alex Young, and I am the Associate Director for Science in the Heliophysics Science Division here at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. You're actually hearing the vibration of the sun. The sun is vibrating at lots of different frequencies. When anything material moves, waves travel through it, and the same thing happens inside the sun and these waves are traveling, bouncing around inside the sun, and if your eyes were sensitive enough, you would actually could see this jiggle, but what scientists have done is they've taken that jiggle and turned it into sound, into a sound that we can hear with our own ears, and that simple sound is giving us a probe inside of a star. I think that's a pretty cool thing. If the vacuum of space could carry sound, the sound of the sun would overpower almost everything around us as it's theorized that its volume would be comparable to a train horn passing by. All day, every day. It's time to return to the story that we started at the beginning about the ranchers who heard a volcano erupt 2,300 miles away, coming in at an estimated 310 decibels. In 1883, a volcano called Krakatoa, located between the islands of Java and Sumatra, erupted. And when I say it erupted, it exploded. It exploded with a force four times as powerful as Sar Bomba, the most powerful nuclear device ever detonated. The explosion was so loud that if you had been standing within 10 miles of the volcano when it went off, you would have certainly, at the very least, gone deaf if the shockwave hadn't killed you. 
sailors who were as much as 40 miles away from it reported that their eardrums ruptured from the sound. Watch out for the shock, it's coming. The reason Krakatoa was able to reach 310 decibels, shattering the physical limits of sound, was because the pressure wave the explosion created, traveling at over a thousand kilometers an hour, compressed the air around it so tightly that it was able to become an entirely different medium in which the sound was carried. To further drive home how insanely loud the explosion of Krakatoa is, let's take a look at this device here. This is called a barograph. It's a device used to measure barometric pressure. Many of these devices were in use in 1883. When the volcano exploded, it was measured on barographs like this one in every part of the world, as far away as you can imagine. When you consider the fact that your eardrums rupture at 150 decibels, the fact that as far as 100 miles away, barographs were registering decibels of 174 really makes you stop to consider how catastrophically loud this event was. But not only was it recorded once, not even twice, it was recorded seven times. Yes, the explosion of Krakatoa was so loud, it was heard throughout the world and the sound traveled around the earth seven times over, over the course of five days. The shockwave and pyroclastic flows killed all 3,000 inhabitants of the nearby island of Sebesi, and many thousands died elsewhere in the world from the resulting tsunamis, pyroclastic flows, ash, and other related causes to the eruption. All the way over in Oslo, Norway, a painter was walking in the evening. At sunset, the sky turned a dramatic blood red. He claimed to have sensed a scream coming from nature filling the air. He took out his canvas and brushes and painted a very famous work of art that you're probably familiar with called The Scream. The blood red skies that he painted being directly attributed to the eruption of Krakatoa. Finally, I'm going to close with the biggest one that I could find. This one is largely theoretical, so there's not much to say on the subject, but I found a few articles talking about what would happen if we went far beyond the limits of not only what we can imagine in mediums we know about, but pass all imaginable barriers and create a sound so devastatingly loud it could spell the end of the entire universe. So what happens if we create a sound that's 1100 decibels? Keep in mind that at the beginning we explored the concept that decibels are a logarithmic measurement. If you had two speakers blasting at 120 decibels next to you, you'd create, theoretically, twice the volume. But 120 decibels doubled doesn't actually equal 240 decibels. You end up with something more like 123. Each decibel is exponentially louder than the one previous, so getting each additional decibel requires much more energy than the last. If you take a sound that's 100 decibels, like your lawnmower, for example, as a point of reference, 1100 decibels would require 10 to the 108th more energy than what's required to produce 100 decibels. Physicists hypothesize I have made love to this machine! My metal boy! That if we could somehow manage to create a sound that reached 1100 decibels, the energy involved would create THE black hole to end all black holes, achieving such an unfathomable mass that the diameter of the event horizon would be 1.747 times 101 to the 38th light years across. Okay, so if you're like me, you're probably thinking, okay, 
rate. That sounds like some big number, but I really can't wrap my head around it. So in an attempt to do so, I did some math. How much of a distance is 1.747 times 101 to the 38 light years? Well, it's hard to do math with numbers that big, without some help anyway. So at the suggestion of my friends on Discord, I went over to Wolfram Alpha, plugged in this impossibly large number, converted it to miles, and asked for it to give me an answer long form without scientific notation. This number was so laughably huge, I had to do some more research just to figure out how to say it. This black hole would have a measurement equal to 149 octovigintillion, 892 septonvigintillion, 194 sexvigintillion, 877 quinvigintillion, 391 quatuorovigintillion, 300 trevigintillion, 35 duovigintillion, 328 unvigintillion, 58 vigintillion, 993 novum yes, decillion, 555 octodecillion, 348 septon decillion, 775 sex decillion, 462 quindecillion, 718 quatuoro decillion, 752 tre decillion, 854 duo decillion, 860 undecillion, 441 decillion, 947 nanillion, 238 octillion, 223 septillion, 977 sextillion, 904 quintillion, 864 quadrillion, 23 trillion, 969 billion, 874 million, 200,000 miles across. The fastest man-made object ever just recently set the record, by the way. A solar probe that zoomed past the sun at 213,200 miles per hour at its peak. If it traveled at that speed across the diameter of this hypothetical black hole, it would take this many years. Don't worry, I'm not going to read it. I think I made my point. So to bring this all back home, an 1100 decibel sound would literally swallow the entire observable universe whole. Obviously, scientists don't really have many answers on how such a sound could be produced or what its source could be. And I can't really blame them since, you know, they probably haven't heard my mixtape. Hey guys, thanks for checking this out. It's, this actually took a little bit longer than I was expecting, so I apologize for the wait. And thank you so much to Small Town Murders for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check them out in the description below. If you guys are interested, I've also got a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash nightdocs. I just released a playlist with over 30 videos that are unlisted currently on my channel on there. Um, so I do try to make it worth your while. And if you're interested, I've also got merch available now. It's over at pixelempire.com slash collections slash nightdocs. Thank you so much. Trevigent, 300, Trevigentillion, gosh, 462, Quint, 462, Quintessil, 
400... 462 Quindicillion, 718 Quatuoro, 718 Quatuoro Decillion, 7, 23 trillion, 23 trillion, 969 billion, 874 million, 200,000 miles. I am not doing that. Oh crap, did I not even hit record? Okay, good. Oh gosh.